What's up, New Hope family? Welcome to New Hope here. Welcome to the lobby. My name is David. I'm so excited that you joined us today with me as always. As always? Not as always. Not as That's always. my podcast move is when Pastor Mike is as <laughs> Whoa, always with me. <laughs> We mix up our lobby guests and we've got Olivia here today. My friend hello, Olivia. Hello. Hi, Ollie. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. And I don't think... Is the, are the sound... Can I do raucous applause for Olivia? I don't oh. think we have raucous applause. Can but we Hattie's stop producing. filming and restart? Could you just give us some raucous applause, please? No, I'm please. Don't could you that. please? It could either. Could you? It could derail. Could you? Whole. Could you please give <laughs> Olivia some raucous applause? I don't think I want Hattie's raucous applause. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> you can do it. You can do it. I'm nervous too. That's so much better than it's ever been. <laughs> raucous applause for Hattie too. Yeah, wow. thank you guys. Wow. Mm-hmm. Raucous applause for Hattie. I've been practicing every night uh, the last <laughs> two weeks. For like six months. <laughs> One day Olivia's going to be on the lobby and I'm going to be able to do raucous applause yes. for Yes. <laughs> well, that was great. Just for you, Olivia. And I'm glad that Thank both you. of you are here. If you're uh, newer to New Hope and or you don't know what's going on right now, maybe you don't normally join us early. This is called the lobby. It's just kind of we hang out before the service gets started. So fun. So let's hang out before the service gets started. I love that idea. Yeah. I okay. love it. Do we have a timer going, producer? We do. Nice. I didn't double check that before we started, <clears throat> which is always a mistake. But you know what you people, on top of it. people say about me? That girl never forgets her timer. Yeah, I hear, I hear that often. <laughs> it's, it's actually on your nameplate on your desk. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I normally think Next of time, that when I think do of we, you. Uh, our other, we have an off-camera producer. Mm-hmm. Off-camera producer. Do we put a nameplate up for the producer on this? No. Can we do one this week? That just says, Hattie Carrier never forgets a timer. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, I feel like that's important. Definitely. Yeah. Well, that's all I've got. Uh, <laughs> Service time. Yeah. Yep. Thanks for being on the lobby. This Olivia. is really fun. We haven't had you on for a while. It's kind of been, it's been so hectic around it's here. It's been about like, a year, before yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not been a year. This is how Olivia's mind works, though. If she hasn't been on in like two weeks, it's been, it's the same as a year. It's been a month, but. Before, because before Christmas it was crazy, so it was pretty right. much just the three of us on the lobby, and then post Christmas same. So now we're. It was time. We were just waiting for time. the right moment. Yeah. Um. Okay. I do have something I want to ask you guys. Mm-hmm. Oh, we can't snap our fingers and make you the host this week. No, that, that's okay. That's disappointing. But I just want to quick uh, I did check a, with Michael. I did get a specific shout out, loving that bit this week, and I appreciated it. The swapping. The swapping. Aww, the host that's swapping. Fun. So please continue, Michael. Okay. <laughs> what just happened? We, we have been uh, holding on to a topic for quite some time mm. now, and I think the time oh, is it's now. Oh, finally happening. And we'll, we'll get Michael's input. He's just right over here. But Olivia loves when Michael's not on camera, as we've established I in do. the past. <laughs> we just love him in the room. Okay, so I'm going to spell a word, yeah. and I want to just hear your thoughts I'm on done. it. I'm done for the day. I just wanted Michael to wave at me. <laughs> That's all I missed. Please continue, Addie. Well, if we need to talk about Michael and waving for No, Michael, we'll we continue can... talking about this word that okay. you've been waiting okay, to talk about. Okay, the word about. is F-I-R-E, mm-hmm. not the song, just F-I-R-E. Not the is song. that one syllable or two syllables? Can we and how backtra- this makes me want to like puke. Can we backtrack to not the song? <laughs> what is happening today? I don't want to think about that. You know that moment in our conversation where we said, "Should we have both the girls on this week? One could produce." That was that was Excuse an interesting me. choice. This is not because of you guys and I are, are oh, you guys are off the rails today, more so than normal. I don't want to be wrong. Oh, <laughs> like, okay. that makes more sense. Okay, let's hear I how you, you just say were getting the word. violently ill. I don't know because of the word. Actually, fire. Um, I'm like done with school, so I don't really want to answer this question. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like a school question. Okay, David. Fire. Hold on. I have an idea. I'm going to say the word and clap as I say it, and that will tell me how many syllables are in it. That's what I want to know, is how you say it and how many syllables I you think the word fire is. A fourth camera, or a third camera on Michael <laughs> today, because his responses to the two of you for the last however many minutes Michael have been need amazing, a camera. and I wish all wait. of you at home could see it. Um. Okay, hold on. This is it. You ready? Everyone, get ready to clap with me as we say the word together. <laughs> this is an all-time low for the lobby. <laughs> Three, two, one. Fire. But is that how you actually <laughs> say it? Jeez. Fire. Fire. It's two syllables, and I say fire. Fire. No, you just said it different fire. when you said it normal. Fire. I think you should. Either way, it's fire. Like fire. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm so glad we're talking years. about this today, but I'm really what sad Michael's not here. What are you going to say, Like, I said like one syllable. No, you, that's two syllables, what you just said. No, no it's yeah, not. Yeah, say it Fire. again. Now you're just trying to say it like super fast. Fire. Fire. Fire no, is better. not how anybody says no, it. Fire. 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 That's fire. <laughs> <laughs> when you start <laughs> clapping, you say it completely it, No, it doesn't matter because either we, way you go fire, whether you're saying it quick or not, we, it's still... We now have video evidence of how you say it differently fire. when you start clapping that is randomly. True. Could fire. we... My, it's, fire. It's three <laughs> syllables, guys. I clap no, three times. No, it's two no matter how quick I say it. Fire. Michael, is there Fire. any way we can pause the lobby, reverse and rewind and watch Olivia <laughs> see it? <laughs> is that possible? It's not, possible. Not this time. Not I don't this time. think we're I don't think yeah, that's okay. I don't think that's gonna happen today. I but just, we'll just hold on guys, to that. Evidence. Can but do you guys know like what the dictionary says? to this question. I don't know if we've ever looked it up. That seems like something for the producer I to do. I think got it. The producer needs to do that immediately. <laughs> but in the chat, we would love to hear uh, you. Yeah, we would love to hear in the chat how many syllables you think the word fire yeah. is. Uh, Olivia, did you, we haven't had you on since the New Year's. Are you a New Year's resolution kind of person? Mm. We've discussed no. this quite a bit. <clears throat> no. No, that's a hard no for me. Yeah, I used to be. I think it's like nice to just start the new year with like some dreams and goals. Like that's always good. But as far as uh -oh. New Year's resolution, Hattie, I don't even want to look at you right now. No, I think the you are gonna. You I think you are, No, I think you are gonna want to look at her. But for me, for me though, I think you can go into the new year with goals and not necessarily call it a New Year's resolution because yeah. I don't want to be like disappointed in myself. Hmm. Week two of the new year. Because, I'm, not, uh, yeah. I'm not a big New Year's person. I think it's nonsensical that we celebrate the random day that we decide our calendar starts. Yeah. But I am now setting Michael's birthday resolutions. I love Michael's birthday resolutions. One day That's after been a thing for a few years. We established that. So feel everybody's welcome to join us. Have we talked about Do this on the lobby before that starting on like your birthday is such a cool like it's an, a new year, new you, as Michael often <laughs> says. But that's a, it. Like if you do want to have some type of change in your life, starting on your birthday, I love that idea. I think I it makes more sense than just the new year. I don't like that because mine most <laughs> of the time is like something to do with like eating. Like I don't want to eat sugar. I don't want to sure. do soda. And so like on my birthday, I want to do all after, those start things. Start the day after your yeah. birthday. Okay. Like you celebrate yeah. your birthday and then the next day. That kind of throws me off, you know? Yeah. Or just do it on Michael's birthday. And that yeah. works for me. Michael's birthday is a good birthday Th to start Thumbs up off. for Michael. Uh, <clears throat> would you like to give the... Yes. This is what, when I Googled, is fire one syllable or two? I'm not going to show you what my Google looks like because I often get most of the words wrong when I like type it in. Like I get I misspell them. <laughs> what? The word fire can be, be pronounced with either one or two uh, syllables. We're all so right. whatever. We're all right. So how are you pronouncing it for those who say there's one? <laughs> the same way we've been saying say it. Say it again. Fire. Fire. You are saying it so fast, so it doesn't it's not like you have two. But I don't think I say fire. it slowly. That's two. It's Gonna come over for a fire? Fire. fire. That's what you're saying. Could you uh, could you give your example fire. of what, what we were sounding like as we were saying it? It sounds like you're saying like, fire. <laughs> like, you're just like, that wasn't as good as It's the not first the same time. as the first How much time, time do we have left? I don't want to go over. We have over. about a minute and a half. Okay, we have about a minute and a half. Do you think people you with a southern yeah. accent, like they say like fire? <laughs> that was... <laughs> What yeah. about how, what would they sound like with a British accent, Fire. Hattie? <laughs> <laughs> I have to channel my inner Pastor Andrea. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I don't know. Fire. Yeah. No, that's that, not true. You just went southern again. <laughs> that's Fire. that's a, a, Fire. A, pers a person Fire. of British Fire. heritage who yeah. grew up in the south. Um, <laughs> We're like both doing something with our hands. Fire. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> you two were in a weird mood <laughs> yesterday when you were together, and it has carried over into today. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, and I'm enjoying it. Yeah. yeah. So We just want to keep the energy. It's a good yeah. day. It's can a good day. Can people, like, comment with, like, audio? They cannot. I wish they could. <laughs> <laughs> I wish they could. Email us, send, please. Send a video or audio recording of you <laughs> saying the word fire, fire to Fur? info at newhopewillison.com, yeah. and Olivia will listen to all of them. I'm just imagining people watching the lobby, like, with either by themselves, like at a coffee shop, like saying, fire, They're like fire, in the coffee fire, shop. fire. <laughs> or with their family members, like having a heated debate about the word fire. I just want people to agree that it's two syllables with me. Thank you. <laughs>
So hold on. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into what? Fire. It is time. Fire. I just want to let but you know. What that. kind of furnace? Fiery. Is that two syllables or three now? Fiery. Well, Fiery. We're gonna, we'll pick that up next week on the lobby. Oh, she's laughing again. <laughs> Everyone, do it with me. Well, uh, thank you for hanging out with us for whatever that was. Um, that's, that's what we do on the lobby. Just we out. spend eight minutes talking about the word. I feel like Fire. if people were trying to hang out with us in the lobby, they'd be like, I've got to go to the restroom yeah. before service starts. <laughs> 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 and like, not hang out. <laughs> oh, my, my mom told me I have to go sit in the worship center 10 minutes before the service I go starts save this some week. Seats for my parents that aren't here. Well, uh, thank you for hanging out with us. I hope you've been jumping in the chat uh, and, and having fun with us. If you haven't yet, jump in the chat, say hello. We love that you're here. We're so excited for this uh, week four, week four of yeah. 23 and Me. Wow. Um, and we will see you in just a minute. <laughs> Well, hey, church, we're so happy that you've joined us today. Yeah. Uh, welcome back. It's week four, week four of 23 and Me. There's only two left. Yeah, today and next week. I feel like this series flew by. It has, yeah, it's like yeah. the new year, maybe. And new just year, new you, new year, fast yeah, series. Exactly. <laughs> we had an awesome uh, time chatting about it last week with those of you that mm -hmm. were with us live. Um, I know the series has been really impactful for so many of you, and so we're so glad that you're here again today. Yeah, and right now we're going to take some time to worship, so let's do that together.
Well, hey again, New Hope. Thanks for joining us in worship today. And today we want to be able to connect with you. And there's two ways that you can do that if you are joining with us live right now. One is to fill out our connect card. And the other one is to chat in the chat box. That's right. I think that's my favorite thing yeah. is chatting in the chat box. It's, especially it's especially when you guys chat more than we chat or more right. than David chat. So we want to be able to hear from you today. Let us know how your day is going. Maybe something that you're up to this, uh, this day after worship. Yeah. Um, just engage with us because we love being able to connect with you. And 
would also fill out that connect card. The button in the chat right now, click that. Uh, let us know uh, how you want to get involved, if you have questions about New Hope, and also, most importantly probably, is prayer requests. Yeah. Let us know how we can be praying yeah. for you as a church. Yeah, and also in the chat box, I said that just for you, Hattie. Yes, thank you. Uh, there's a link right now to our New Hope Here Kids, and mm -hmm. it's a service that's designed specifically for your children, um, preschool up to elementary, and Pastor Andrea, Pastor Anna, they have a great time together. Yes. They play a game, there's a time of worship, and then there's a teaching that's for your children. So we encourage you, take out a second device, click that link, and it'll take you to a service that's just for your children. You know what would be really fun is if Anna and Andrea were in the chat box today. Yeah. Maybe we'll make that happen. We can some, try and some convince week. them. Yeah, next week maybe. <laughs> yeah. Stay tuned. We'll let you know. <laughs> also, one last thing in the chat box yes. is uh, just our, our button for offering, our yeah. way to give back to God His tithes in our offering. And again, we just want to thank those of you who give faithfully to New Hope every week. And if this is your home church, we just encourage that. Uh, it allows us to do ministry that reaches people uh, locally but then all over. Uh, we never know exactly where people are joining mm -hmm. from, but it's so cool just to hear stories about how people are connecting uh, with each other and then most importantly with God uh, as they watch New Hope here. So we encourage you to get back to God during this time now. Yeah, and before we get to the message, we want to pray together, so let's mm -hmm. do that now. Uh, God, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you uh, for bringing us all together. No matter where we're at, uh, we get to worship uh, together as a community. And <clears throat> God, we just ask that you bring us closer. Uh, just help us to um, uh, rely on each other in, uh, in times of need, just like a, a community would mm -hmm. in a physical location, God. And um, as we prepare for the message, God, we just ask that you um, just open our hearts, open our minds to what you have to teach us today. And uh, yeah, be with Pastor Mike as he delivers it. And um, yeah, we just we just pray for a good day uh, and a, and a, yeah, a good rest of the afternoon, God, and or whatever time people may be watching, God, we we, we know that you are with us. Um, yeah, and we can rely on you. We thank you. We love you. We pray this in your son's name. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome to New Hope here. I am so glad that you're with us today, and I love to start with questions. So I want to start with a question that may be a little bit odd to you if you're just figuring the Christian thing out these days, but here's the question. Do you want to hear from God? Do you want to hear God's voice? And I want you to think about it, because I believe most of us, in fact, I really believe all of us do at some level. In these first few weeks of 2023, we're asking the question, God is speaking, and here's the question, are we listening? Are we listening? And here's what I want to do today. I want to start today by taking us to a verse before we get to the Old Testament where we're finishing up. I want to take us to the New Testament and to a verse written by the Apostle Paul in about A.D. 61. We're going to unpack it real quickly and then we'll turn the clock back to 722 B.C. where we left up off last week as we've been walking through the Bible. And we're going to look today at three different times God spoke to three different people. And we're going to learn what it means to hear God's voice when it comes to his invitation to follow him. But here's the verse. I'll put it here on the screen. Ephesians 4 says, Therefore I, this is Paul speaking, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of, look at the next two words, your calling. Do you know you had a calling from God? And look what he says next. He says, for you have been called by God. 
I, I want to encourage you, read those last six words out loud, if you can, where you're at with me. They're underlined here on the screen. You have been called by God. Now, let's just give this a holy kind of pause for a moment and let it create a moment in your heart. Think about this. The God who created the universe, he has called you, he's invited you, and that means that he's designed you and set you apart for a specific purpose. I am absolutely convinced that God has called you. And calling isn't just reserved for priests and preachers. God has called every one of us. And, and here's why that matters. See, for me, if I'm, if I'm really honest with you, the fact that I've been called has carried me through some of the most difficult times. And some of you are, are facing that right now. Maybe you're physically drained. May, maybe you're emotionally depleted. Maybe you're spiritually exhausted or discouraged. And here's what I know about you and me. If the devil can't destroy you, he's going to do his best to discourage you. And that's where some of you are at right now. And if you were to ask me any question, some of you would ask me the question, how do you get through times of discouragement? And the best answer I can give you is you need to be convinced that you are called, that God is involved and interested in your life, and that he is active, that he's inviting you to partner him. And I want to go to the upper story here because we've been learning every week what it means to read the word, to read God's word from three different perspectives, upper story, lower story, my story. And here's an upper story truth right at the top. And it's a truth for us for 2023. And we're, I'm calling these each week 23 and Me Truths. Here it is. I am called. I want you to say it with me. Say it with some feeling. I am called. Say it with me again. I am called. And of course, here's the question. Here's the question. If you and I, if you and I have been called, what does it mean to be called by God? Because it's a word that we kind of use around the church, right? People will say, God called me, or God called me to do this, or he called me and told, you know, he told me not to do this. And sometimes if we're real honest, all right, I'm talking to those of you who are from the church. If we're real honest, we kind of use this whole idea of calling as an excuse. An excuse to do something that maybe we know we shouldn't do, but we know we use it as a trump guard. If we say God called us, then people can't argue with us, right? I had a girl tell me one time when I was in college that God told her that she was called to be my wife. One problem with that, God didn't tell me that she was called to be my wife. And sometimes we get this mixed up because we don't fully understand what calling is. Because most of the time we think of calling in terms of God assigning you a job or a task or giving you a life purpose or a big theme for your life. And that's all good. That's part of calling. But I want to show you today four things that God calls you. Three of them God will call his calling you to in your life before you'll ever have clarity on what he has called you to do with your life. Now, he may give you a preview, but you'll never get full clarity on what God has called you to do before you answer the questions of calling when it comes to the who. It kind of sounds like Dr. Seuss, doesn't it? God wants to call you to a who before he's interested in calling you to do. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at some stories from this moment where we've been. And uh, if you've got your books, turn to, I believe it's chapter 16 in your books. If you've got your Bibles, it's 2 Kings 17. It's page 220. And we'll talk about the first calling. It's right at the Top of page 220. It says, They did wicked things that aroused the Lord's anger. Who's they? It's the nation of Israel. We'll, we'll talk about that in a moment when we step the lower story. They worshiped idols, even though the Lord had said, You shall not do this. The Lord warned Israel and Judah through, through all of his prophets and seers, Turn from your evil ways, observe my commands and decrees in accordance with the entire law that I commanded your ancestors to obey. We talked about that last fall, about God giving us limits that are meant to produce life, and we think they limit life, and so we say no to him. He says, and I delivered, I delivered those to you through my servants, the prophets. But catch this, they would not listen 
They would not listen. That's what we're talking about in these five weeks, is learning to listen. And they were as stiff-necked as their ancestors who did not trust in the Lord their God. And one of the saddest statements at all the Bible, so the people of Israel were taken from their homeland into exile in Assyria. And they're still there. They're still there. I want to go to the lower story for a moment because this is where we get our historical context, right? And at this time in history, we need to get this right. We talked about this last week, making sure we understand what we're reading. It takes time, and that's okay. Give yourself patience. But when we read about Israel at this point in history, we have to remember this is post-Civil War. So when you read about Israel, it's talking about the ten tribes in the north. So let me put a, a map on the screen again to help us. And after the Civil War, it was north against south. The south was two of the tribes, and they called themselves by the name of the biggest of the tribes, Judah. And during the time of the divided kingdom, that's these two tribes, in the north, every single one of the 19 kings that they had of Israel refused to follow God. And they taught all of the ten tribes to not listen to God too. And it, things just got worse and worse and worse. Now in the south, it was a little bit different. Of the 19, they had 19 and 19. We talked a little bit about the significance of that on the Grow podcast. But of the 19 kings they have, five of them actually did their best to listen for God's voice. And 14 didn't. So you have the context, right? And it was during these years, these years in the northern kingdom, that God spoke and God called and God invited. And we just saw it. God spoke and God called and God invited. And he called them, first of all, not to a bunch of things to do. But here's the first calling. God calls you to put him in first place. That's God's first calling for you and me. And notice the warning. He said, they worshiped idols, even though the Lord had said, you shall not do this. In other words, they put other gods, gods of their making before him. And I know we look at this and we think idols are ancient world. Idols are, you know, pagan or less educated people. And we think of idols as something we don't have to deal with today. But And here's the deal. An idol is anything or anyone. Listen, an idol is anything or anyone that you go to first before you go to God. That means we still deal with idolatry today. We may not go to high places and temples and pagan places to worship, but we have idols in here and in here, right? My name is Mike. I'm your friend, but... Let me just help us think about this for a moment. I want you to reflect on your life. When you feel like your life is out of control, who do you go to or what do you do to make yourself feel better? If it's anything or anyone before you go to God, there's a potential idol. You say, that's pretty extreme. Well, that's just truth. Think about this. When you're overwhelmed or you're discouraged, Who do you go to or what do you go to first? I'm not talking about not involving other people in your life. We need people. But where do you go first in order to feel better? And here's the truth. If you put anything or anyone before God, in essence, in essence, listen to me close. If you put anyone or anything before God, in essence, we're saying that we believe that person or that thing is more trustworthy is more powerful, is, if I can say this grammatically incorrect, more good than God. And what we're doing is we're separating ourselves from God, or even worse, we're trying to control him. And listen, it can be good stuff, right? I had a friend who years ago decided he wanted to learn to ski, and and skiing is a great thing. I grew up in the mountains. I love the mountains. I love going outside, and he fell in love with skiing and all that went with it. He bought all the equipment. He took all the lessons, and he said, and I think it's true, and it's great. There's nothing wrong with it. It just helped him recharge, but here's what happened. Pretty soon, skiing began to take over his life. It began to be what he went to and what he did for fulfillment and for competition and to meet his desires. And he gradually 
began to drift away from the church first, eventually drifted away from God, and then after several years of that, the rest of his life began to crumble. His marriage began to crumble. His kids began to make choices. You see, that's pretty extreme, but here's what happened is he began to pursue other things, and he got his life out of order. See, putting God first is not God demanding you because he wants to somehow be in control. No, it's how life is designed to work. God is life. God is the source of life. And if we go to anything else first, it's going to get things out of order. Think of it in terms, if we can change to a different metaphor, think in terms of building. If you build on a wrong foundation, what's going to happen eventually? You may not notice it right away, but eventually the building will begin to sag and to crumble. And if we build on our lives on the wrong foundation or the wrong order, it will mess up our lives. And that's what happened to Israel. And we read about it a couple weeks ago. When the Civil War happened... In the north, they stopped going to the temple because the temple was in Jerusalem, and that was the capital of the south. And they invented their own ways and their own gods. They built built their own temple way up north so they could go away from the temple. They built another one kind of on the border so they didn't have to go there. And now, with where we're at, chapter 16, 208 years later, after that civil war, God gave them time to listen. God invited them back and called them back. Finally, it says the northern tribes were taken away from their homeland. And as you fast forward in history, these 10 tribes were never heard from, have never been heard from in any significant way again in human history. You say, that seems kind of harsh. We're going to talk about that next week. But here's... Here's the first call. Before we can talk about what God wants you to do and a purpose in your life, the question is, are you willing to put him in first place? Because why would God invite you to be part of something and part of something that would partner with him if you're going to get life out of order? All right, that's first story. Second story, same page, but bottom of page 220. Bottom page 220. This isn't just the country. This Now we're narrowing it in on another country. We're moving from north to south. So in the third year of Hosea, son of Elah, king of Israel, Hezekiah, son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. We'll talk about that lower story in a minute. He was 25 years old when he became king. And he reigned in Jerusalem 29 years. His mother's name was Abijah, daughter of Zechariah, And he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. One of the five, just as his father David has done. Now, is King David his literal father? No, he was his ancestor. That's just saying he was related to him. It says he removed the high places. In other words, he removed the false places of worship. He smashed the sacred stones and he cut down the Asherah poles. And the Lord was with him. And he was successful in whatever he undertook. He even rebelled, and I added the word even there because it emphasizes, we'll talk about it in a minute, against the king of Assyria and did not serve him. What it, what it literally says there, and did not go to him first, did not listen to him. Now we need to get some context here. Remember we talked about last week, always try and understand, so this is a lower story thing, where this was. It gives this context. It says, Hosea was king of Israel. Where's Israel? That's the north. And Hezekiah was king of Judah. Where is that? That's the south. And Assyria was going to wipe out the northern kingdom, and everybody knew what was going to happen next because Assyria was taking over the world. They had their sights set on the southern kingdom. And King Hezekiah had a choice. Because Assyria was going to give him a choice. He was going to give him the choice. You surrender and you listen to us first and live. Or if you want to follow your God and listen to him first, we're going to conquer you. You catch catch what was happening here? Hezekiah had a choice. Do I go to God first and listen? Or do I listen to what the world says is the best choice? It was a tough call. It was a tough decision. Because one looked like, if I make this decision, I'll live. And everybody else will live. 
but God says to put him first. And this is where we go to the second calling, and the second calling builds on the first one. God calls you to trust him even when it's tough. Now, that sounds a lot like the first, but we're going to build on that, so stick with me. Hezekiah could have surrendered, and it might have made sense to everybody else. He could have given in, and God might have told him to do that, but God asked him to do what? To put him first. And when he, when he went to God first, God said, listen, I'm going to deliver you and I'm going to show Judah that when you come to me first, even when it's tough, it matters. It matters. If you have your books, turn over to 220, 223. Actually, it's page 224. Flip over to 224. It's about in the middle of the page. Hezekiah said, I'm going to listen to God's, ver God's voice first. And he told the people, we're going to listen. It says in the middle of the page, that night the angel of the Lord went out and put to death 185,000 in the Assyrian camp. He wiped out most of the Assyrian army. And when the people got up in the next morning, they were all there were all the dead bodies. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, broke camp and withdrew. And he returned to Nineveh. Nineveh was the capital of Assyria and stayed there and stayed there. And here's the lesson. When you decide to put God first, God's next step for you, and sometimes it's multiple steps, he's going to give you an opportunity to learn to put him first in a little bit tougher situation. And it's going to be tempting to say, okay, I want to put you first in every situation, but not this one. I still remember when I, when I first made the commitment to tithe. If you aren't familiar with tithing, tithing is a spiritual practice, actually a command from God, if you're a follower of Jesus, to take the first 10%. Tithe means 10. Take the first tenth and give it back to God. And there's all kinds of reasons we come up with not to do that, right? And for me, I, I came up with all kinds of reasons, but finally I realized God was asking me to put him first. And tends to be with me like it is with most of us. My finances was kind of the last place I wanted to put him first. And so I made a commitment. God, I'm going to give to you first. I'm going to give the first 10% to you first. And so I wrote the check. I dropped it in the offering plate. You know, we don't write many checks anymore, right? We text to give or whatever. And the very next day I got in my car and the check engine light went on in my car. And it's like, okay, here I am, God, I'm trusting you, and now I've got to spend money on my car. I got into class because I was in college at the time, and a professor said, oh, I forgot to tell you about a book. There's a book you need. And of course, because it's for college, what do they do? Cha-ching, they cost more, right? For some reason, if it's college, they decide to charge you more. And it seemed like one thing after another after another, and the bills just started piling up. And I started arguing with God, saying, God, you said to put you first, and I put you first, and now all of this happened. And I wish I could tell you that, like, the next day, everything got better, but it was several days. And honestly, I mean, I'm a poor college student. I didn't have a whole, have, I didn't have a whole lot of money. There were some days that even ramen was too expensive, and so I had to skip lunch just to save money. And I'm having this argument with God. God, you said... I, that I'm to put you first, and now you're giving me an opportunity to trust you, and you're calling me to do this, but this is tough. And it was several days later, several days of struggling, I went to my mailbox, and there was a letter in my mailbox. And I opened it up, and it was a letter from a guy in my church back home. And as I opened it up, a check fell out. And I looked at the check, and it just caught me off guard, because the check was for more than what I needed to pay all my bills. When you and I are called by God, He will always provide, not necessarily when we not want and not necessarily how we want, because the calling is to go deeper in our trust. And every step you take with God he will give you an opportunity to go deeper in putting him first. And before you and I can settle, God, what do you want me to do? He wants to determine who you're going to be and who you're going to listen to. Third story, over another page. Again, on page 224, page 224, 
Then here it is. This is one of the prophets, the prophet Isaiah. It starts out on the bottom, page 224. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Now, before we go any further, let's just go to lower story real quick, all right? We've got to get the historical context. This particular story is from one of the books of prophecy in the Old Testament, the book of Isaiah. And we talked a little bit about last week that the, some of the stuff we read in First and Second Kings, you've got to flip over several pages in your Bible to the books of prophecy, and you can read about some of the same things and read some of the words of the prophets. And uh, even though it's a book near the end of the Old Testament, it's telling what's happened all the way back in 2 Kings. And this was a moment early in Isaiah's life before Hezekiah became king. Uzziah was Hezekiah's great-grandfather. Great Hezekiah was his great-grandson. And Isaiah has this amazing encounter with God, and he's given a glimpse into heaven. All right? That's a lower story. Let's read on. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted. He had this amazing God encounter, seated on a throne. And the train of his robe filled the temple. It's, it's a picture for God's presence. Above him were seraphim. It's one of the names of angels, each with six wings. With two wings, they covered their faces. With two wings, they covered their feet. And with two, they were flying. And they were calling to one another. So what Isaiah is trying to do is he's trying to describe as best he can stuff he didn't fully understand. He's seeing this and trying to describe this. It says they were saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. And at the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook and the temple was filled with smoke. It's like the subwoofers were cranked to max, right? Woe to me, I cried, I'm ruined. He has this realization. For I'm, I'm a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. When you have an encounter with God, a genuine encounter with God, one of the first realizations is, I'm not God. Okay? I'm not God, and I need help. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. And with it, he touched my mouth and he said, see, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin is atoned. Or you can write off to the side, paid for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? There comes the dew. And he said, here am I, send me. God was calling him to a task. But before he called him to a task, he was calling him to, uh, he was calling him to be holy. And that's the word that's repeated over and over and over here by the angels. It's this word holy. And Isaiah realizes, I'm not holy. God is holy. And you and I, we struggle with God is holy and we aren't holy. Why? Because we've been so infected and so messed up by sin that, and we've been kind of poisoned by sin that we're it's like we have muddy water, in a sense, in us. We're unclean. And so we don't fully understand the difference. But when you have a genuine encounter with God, you realize, I'm not good enough for you, God. You're perfect, and I'm not. And notice, I love what happens. A coal is taken from the altar. What's an altar? The altar often was the place where sin was paid for, where life was given because we separated ourselves from life sacrifice happened there. And this coal touches his mouth and he's declared that he's forgiven. His guilt is taken away. What did Isaiah have to do in order to be forgiven? All he had to do was recognize he needed it. And it was free. And this is a thread we've been following all the way through and will ultimately take us to Jesus. So often we want to say, Here's what I need to do. What do I need to do in order to live up to God? And God says, it starts with a call. Do you want to put me in first place? If you put me in first place, I'm going to take you deeper. And God's purpose is to make you holy. What does it mean to be holy? In the verse we started out from the Apostle Paul, God saved us and called us to what? To live a holy life. It's a who before a do. Holy life means you live differently. There's a word the Bible uses to call, to describe what it means to be holy. It's the word sanctified, and it's one of those Bible words, but the word sanctified means to be set apart, to be different. And in other words, what's happening is, as you and I follow Jesus, you don't look like the world. 
Because why? Because you're putting him first and the rest of the world is putting other things first. You don't act like the world. Why? Because we're learning to go deeper with him when the rest of the world wants to go shallower with God. You don't think like the world. Why? Because he's teaching you how life was meant to be lived. You don't behave like the world. You're not driven by the things that other people are driven by because you're driven by the desire to be close to the one that you are called to be close to. You're called by Jesus. You're infused with the power of the Holy Spirit to live a holy life. Your calling starts with putting him first. He then says, I want to go deeper with you. And that means he's calling you to be different. And notice what happens happens next. I put it here on the screen. God says, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And then Isaiah says, here I am, send me. See, here's here's the, the final calling. God calls you to a specific mission. But often you and I want to know, God, what are you calling us to? What are you calling us to do? What task, what job, what place, what location? And God might give us a preview of this. But often we want to know so that we can decide whether we want to say yes or not. Which is why the first three callings matter so much. Because when I've chosen to put him first, when I'm going deeper with him, when I am becoming holy, when I'm becoming different, what's happening? I'm learning to listen for God and to trust his leadership. So when he calls me to a specific mission, when he calls me to a specific mission, The answer is yes, I want to be part of it. So let's end today by going to my story. And we started with the question, God is speaking, are we listening? I want to build on that question. And the question is, has God called you to something and you've said no? Has God called you to something and you've tried? Maybe he's called you to go deeper with him and it was a tough situation, like tithing maybe, and you failed him and you've wondered, has he abandoned you? Like you feel, uh, you've wondered if he's said, all right, you're going into exile like those 10 tribes. And here's, here's the good news. If you're still concerned about it, it means he's still working in your heart. And we've been following this truth all the way through. Remember, God doesn't call perfect people. He calls imperfect people to learn to trust him. And so here's what I want to do with my story. I just want to help us understand what calling really looks like. How many of you would suggest that maybe God has called me to teach the Bible? And you can just put it in the chat. You kind of raise your hands. And if you say no or you don't do that, you'll hurt my feelings. No, I'm just kidding. But it isn't a trick question. What I'm trying to help you to say is is say, I think you're called by God to be a pastor. And if you think that that's my primary calling, that my primary calling is to be a pastor, that's a problem. Or if you think God only calls pastors and missionaries, that's a problem. You realize I'm also called to be a husband to Kylie. How many of you would agree to that? God has called me to that. I'm called to be a dad to my boys. And those two things take a distinctly different skill set and expression to fulfill that that calling. Kyle and I might get into an argument, and in in that moment, I am called to do what? I'm called to treat my wife the way that God has called me to treat her. And I fail in that sometimes. To live in this relationship with her, I'll fail in it. And it's a different setting. It's a different calling. So am I called to be a husband? Am I called to be a dad? Am I called to be a preacher? I am called to those things. Those are the things I'm called to do. But what God has called me to do, listen, is far less important than who God has called me to be. Because I can't be a great husband. I can't be a great dad. I can't even be a good husband or good dad. I definitely can't be a great teacher of the Bible if I'm not living a holy life, if I'm not fulfilling my calling and putting him first. And that's a calling that God has to renew in my life on a regular basis. I remember kneeling at an altar at a youth camp years ago, the first time I realized I needed to put him first. But I've knelt at a lot of altars since then. And here's the reality, you're called, you have a choice. 
And it starts with God's invitation for you to follow his leadership. And so I want to give you an invitation right here at the end. I want to give you an invitation if you've never decided to follow God's leadership in your life, to put him first. You can do that right now. You can very simply do what Isaiah did. God, I'm a sinner. I'm unclean. Would you forgive me? And would you help me to learn to follow you? You can pray a prayer just like that. Maybe you are a follower of Jesus and you've failed in this. You've fallen into idolatry like God's people have had all those years ago. Maybe you need another altar moment today and just say, God, here I am. Help me to be holy. Help me, be, help me to follow you. God has called you and he wants you to follow him. Listen, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, our team is going to come on in just a moment. And they're going to help you with how to follow up with that because that's your first step. And if you ha are praying that prayer to come back to God and want to let us know and you say, I need help, they'll talk about how, how we can help you as a church as well. But let me pray for you right now. Heavenly Father, I would ask that you would help us. Help us to follow you. Help us to hear your voice and to say yes to your call. To put you first. To understand that you've called us to a who before you've called us to do anything. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Well, again, church, we're so happy that you joined us today, and mm -hmm. we hope that you found today's teaching valuable and that you're encouraged to take a next step. Yes, and for some of you, that next step might be really kind of a first step of making that decision to follow yeah. Jesus for the first time or submit your life to him, saying, I believe in you, Lord, and I want to trust you with yeah. my life. And if that's you today, we are so excited, excited for you. We want Ooh. to celebrate. Good woo, Michael. <laughs> that was really good. He's really excited. He doesn't woo much. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> but we are just so happy for you that you made this decision, mm -hmm. and uh, as your church family, uh, we would love to know your name that you made that decision today uh, one so we can be praying for you as you uh, your life will be different now yes, which is absolutely. so awesome uh, but also to be able to give you some resources we have a booklet uh, just some things that answer some questions of like what's next right, right. Uh, and so if you want those resources what you do I, I think you do <laughs> yeah. text the word next to the number that's on the bottom of the screen here but it's 701-501-8002 I always have to look at Michael because he remembers <laughs> it for me. But that's it. Text that number, get those resources, and let us know that you made that decision today. Yeah, and for everyone watching, we want to encourage you to check out our podcast. It's called The Grow Podcast. So good. You can find it on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, Pastor Mike and David. Uh, they, they go a little bit deeper in the message. And uh, um, it's just Pastor Mike sharing what he couldn't fit in on a Sunday morning uh, and just sharing more information yeah, for you guys so and it's a great uh, great way to grow in your faith and so we encourage you to do that yes and for those of you joining that's all of you we really want to encourage you come back next week yes. uh, we're live every sunday 9 30 and 11 15 yep. invite someone to join you yes. in watching the service or share it with somebody later on maybe send them that link so that they can watch too yes. and remember we don't go to church we are the church so let's go and be the church today I forgot to tell you guys because I'm a little off my game. Remember, we don't go to church. We be the church. <laughs>
<laughs> that's not right. That's not right. <laughs> let's go and be the. Remember, let's go and be the church. Is that that's right? <laughs> We're lost people found and found people growing, right? How do you say it? <laughs> let's go and be the church. That's it. 